Hello, who's this? <laughs> it is I, <laughs> Leclerc. <laughs> um, have we got Lishman? Lishman is busy getting his bits together, even as we speak. Getting his bits together. So, uh, he will be on shortly. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine now, yeah. Brilliant. I'll turn that phone off so no one calls me. Nice weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've lost track of days. When you work from home, you lose track of the days, so I actually don't even know what day it is. It's Monday, <laughs> it's, isn't it? I think it is Monday, yeah. It's Wednesday. Is Definitely it Wednesday? Wednesday oh, God. <laughs> I forgot to put the bins out in that case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could be Thursday. <laughs> I'm not oh. sure. I see my parole officer mm. on a Thursday. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Still have to sign that register. Oh, I'll tell you what, my, my hand gets sore every month from signing that register. God, yeah, I can't <laughs> wait till Operation U Tree works its way around to the BDA. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. I was just I was just wondering if anyone might have sent a letter to Jim or fix it when they were young saying Dear Jim, please can you fix it for me to be part of a major police operation for yeah. 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> and this was all about making that dream come true. You know, it's possible. <laughs> I was, when I was in London uh, probably three or four weeks ago, um, I was following a, uh, a really big flash Range Rover and the number plate was uh, J1M double L. So, but it, it was placed as Jim L. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's lost a lot of money over the last uh, few months. Well, it's not as popular as it once was, certainly. No. I think at that time, though, everybody wanted to sit on Jim's knee. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you said <laughs> written, written a letter to Jim asking him to fix it, I thought you meant Barry Cockcroft writing to little Jimmy Steele. Because that's <laughs> why he, he, they, he wrote him a letter, didn't he? So, can you fix the National Health Service for me? So I don't know whether how that's going. That's uh, there's yeah. a bit of debate at the moment over whether or not the new contract's going to come in before or after the election, because um, we mm. interviewed Eddie Crouch and he said definitely before because it's a coalition commitment. And uh, yeah, I went to a Department of Health media briefing last uh, last week, and um, they were very uh, much oh, because so uh, Steve Tidman, old Professor Steve Tidman, the only economist in the village. He asked when it was going to be coming in, and um, Barry was very much, um, well, when it's ready, you know. Um, but not, not, I got the feeling that I still, I went to ASPD and I told them, you were there, weren't you, Richard? Yeah, yeah. And I, my prediction is after the election. I can't see them bringing in a major new and fairly controversial dental contract in advance of the 2015 election. But, um, but uh, you know, a lot of people saying that it will will come in. Uh, but mm. um, I don't know. I still think the signs are that it's so much easier to delay something by a year, isn't it, than take a chance that it might be an, a pre-election issue. Uh, they don't want NHS dentistry or lack thereof to blow up, do they, as an, a pre-election issue? Not again. I no. think that did John Major in to a large extent, that. So are these pilots showing that everything is going really well then with this... Well, I think they this always do, and they always do. You know, the whether it's with all of the pilots I've looked at and attended press conferences for, it doesn't matter who's been the Secretary of State, they've always wheeled out a load of dentists who are... I mean, they've got 50 or 70 dentists on it now, haven't they? They only need to find two who say it's the best thing since sliced bread. And um, they wheel them out, and um, we all, you know, it, it's introduced, and we all pile in and try and... And work out where the um, weaknesses are. Have we lost Richard? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm back. I don't know what happened there. Well, I've lost Chris as well then. I've been talking to myself. Is Chris not there? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to try and get you on the same line at the same time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is Chris still on there on a different line then? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Are you on your mobile? No. Let, 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 let me ring you both back. Hello? <laughs> I, I just don't know what happened then. 
I went off on a rant, and the the oh, yeah. the phone packed up. Yeah. Which it reminds me of that. Um, <laughs> I had a car once that uh, not uh, that Allegro again. No, no, it was a bit more sophisticated than the Allegro. It was uh, it actually uh, remembered how I drove and everything. You know, it's got like a memory. And um, <laughs> what did it scream every time you got in the car? Yeah, one morning it just locked me out and told me to fuck off. <laughs> you might have thought it was your, your wife getting in to the driver's seat. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> don't don't even joke about that sort of thing, Richard. We've got a funny thing going on, my wife and I, with driving because she's got longer legs than I have. I've got, although I'm taller than her, I've got short legs and a long trunk. As I, this is yeah. what I always tell the girls. And which is odd because it means I'm actually taller sitting down than I am standing up. Yeah. Can you believe that? <laughs> Maybe you've probably got big lungs. <laughs> I've got, uh, I'm, out of, I'm all out of proportion. The top half of me is very long and the bottom half of me from the waist down is very short. So if I'm standing up in a room, I won't be the tallest person. But if I'm sitting down in a room, I will be the tallest person around the table. Mm. It's very strange. But it does like mean when we get in a car, I have to put the seat forward. And when she gets in the car, she has to put the seat back. Which is yeah. weird, isn't it? It's the wrong way around. I think a lot of men would kill to have a really long trunk, so... <laughs> well, this is why I've always had and one. A, and a long leg either way. I don't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just no... Uh, I don't think anything of it. I've just always had it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> So anyway, now what we're gonna we're gonna keep this light because this is our Christmas netcast, isn't it? So it's all you know. Yeah. We're looking forward to a bit of time off, aren't we? Yeah, too. Oh right. yeah. So we had um, one thing we are doing within the association is we're getting replies to the private fees and wages guide, and this is something that only we do, and there's a reason why only we do it. Other people have tried and failed to do this. Dentistry magazine, nice good old Julian English. He'll try anything if he thinks he can <laughs> do something that you know it, it, they had a go they put out a questionnaire and asked everyone what their private fees were and um and i think they did it for a year or so and um it's not quite as easy as that because people have to trust you you know with the mm. it, it, the, the information is quite uh sensitive so especially because we ask them to put their GDC numbers on and their hourly rates and everything. So it's all done quite sort of confidentially within the association. And uh, one time the Office of Fair Trading, I think it was, asked us to pop along and have a chat with them. And they said, look, you know, this is a cartel. What you're doing is you're telling people how much to charge privately. And we thought about it and we said, well, actually, we're not. What we're doing, we're just doing research. We're just saying... How much are you charging? And then we average it all out and send it out as a, a bit of research. Um, yeah. So they thought about it for a couple of minutes and they said, hmm, yeah, I suppose you are. So, in fact, that's why we get away with it, because we have cleared it with the OFT. Now, other people like Code, for example, have again, have they tried to do it? Well, I don't think they tried to do it. What they did was they, they thought that they might like to do it. And then they thought about it and they thought, no, we're going to we're going to fall foul of the um, OFT if we do this, so we'll, we won't touch it. And so nobody else will touch it. BDA doesn't issue a private fees guide. Uh, code doesn't. Nobody else does. So um, NASDAQ not? Well, NASDAQ does benchmarking, doesn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, they issue all sorts of stuff, which is um, you know useful stuff about um, what percentage of your turnover should be spent on staff and what percentage of your turnover should be spent on lights and heat and stuff like that. But I don't yeah. think they actually benchmark private fees. In fact, I haven't seen it. Um, and it's quite difficult to do it because what you think that you would do would be just to write to a bunch of dentists and say, can you send us your private fees, you know, or your private fees guides. Yeah. And even now, even now, after all these investigations, dentists very rarely have a private fees guide. They will give a quote uh, if a patient asks. And, and obviously they, they do give quotes for private treatment, but they won't... Um, they won't have it all nicely formatted. And, of course, if it is nicely formatted, it's not standardised. So you have to have a standardised questionnaire and then get them to sort of try and shoehorn their fee scale into your questionnaire. And mm. I've got a few here. And uh, the two things that we do ask them for, one is their GDC number um, and the other one is their hourly rate. 
and uh, many of them well well several of them don't like to put their gdc number because they don't want to be identifiable which is fine but a lot of them who put their gdc number don't put their hourly rate and i don't think that's because they don't want to know they don't want us to work out how long they're taking for everything i think it's just because they don't know it they yeah. they haven't set one you know they in fact they they wouldn't know how to work it out but it's going well. We've got a massive mm -hmm. sample. I must say, we've got the largest number of returns that we've had for a long time this year. So that's coming out with the fusion on the 1st of February. It'll be as a, an insert. And uh, we're going to try and do something a bit special for everyone who's returned a questionnaire because we do appreciate that. But uh, that's going to be interesting. I'm the one who's going to sit down and do, do all the analysis on the 16th of January. Uh, and it is a bit of a... A, a job you know trying to work out whether we're going to use the mean the modian or the mood or whatever the arithmetical terms is yeah. standard deviation and pi chi squared test and all this but we it comes out and also it's national the other thing everyone says is will it tell me how much people are charging in in the road in my road right and we're like no because it's the, the sample we have, if we had a sample of 20,000 or something, we would be able to regionalise it and say this is north, this is east, etc. We don't have that many. Uh, we don't have thousands of replies. So what we do is we just say this is the average, This is and it's a national average, this is what it was the national average last time, crowns are going up, root treatments are going down, etc. And then you have to apply your own a factor which is obviously relevant to your practice, what sort of practice you, what sort of dentistry you do, where you are located and stuff like that. But it gives a very good idea of what's on the up and, and what's on the down, you know, whether people are charging more or less for whitening or whether people are charging more or less for emergency call-outs and stuff like that. So um, I, when I was in practice full-time, I certainly found it very useful. Mm. So that's going well. That's good. So what, are you, um, what, are you what is your hourly rate? My hourly rate used to, well, I'll tell you what, I used to uh, try and stick quite closely to the British Dental Guild hourly rate, which was, um, I think it was £250 of a half a day. And uh, that's, they sort of took everything into consideration. That, that's what they paid you if you were away from the practice. And so I used to try and sort of tie it to that. Um, so... But uh, so I suppose two, well, two hundred and fifty pound for half a day is not a tremendous amount, is it? No, it's not. You know, well, five hundred pound a day. But I think obviously when I was working in the practice, I was earning more than that. Certainly a lot more than I get or have ever got. <laughs> yeah, but you get a fortune in royalties, Chris. Come on with all your books. <laughs> yeah, well, this is true. I've sold, I think, seven now. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. How many? <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously, how many have you sold? Do you get um, figures from your publisher? Uh, not for a while because uh, he's been doing other stuff. He's, you know, it's a small operation. But no, I, I think it's anywhere between um, probably five and four hundred thousand. You know. <laughs> okay. What we need is um, lots of people to buy my book because everyone says it's amazing and uh, therefore everyone should be buying it, really. The cover yeah. looks good. Yeah, <laughs> it is a good cover. <laughs> it is. House of Pigs, buy it for the cover. <laughs> yeah, buy it for the cover. <laughs> but I, I've, been, uh, I've been writing the second one and uh, it's, it's very dark. So anyone who likes <laughs> dark stuff, you know, dark, grim depictions of violence lots of bad language um but most of all a thrilling ride right. you know, that's what i do i i mm. give people a thrilling ride is, is it a follow-up to house of pigs or is it a independent story house of bacon yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's basically the next stage in in the food production uh system yeah no yeah. it's um it's it's written within the same universe, but a completely different tale. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, that's my plug. That's my. That's my great. No, I think it's great. I, love, I mean, you know, I love your books, and I love the fact that you've got all this in your head, and you have to get it out. I think that's great. For those of us who write, know what it's like writing. You have to do it. You know, you have to do it because mm. it's in your head, and if you don't get it out, you're going to explode. 
and uh, I've I wrote um, I know it's completely off topic, but I wrote an article on bitcoins for the uh, next issue of Fusion because I want to try and explain to people what they are because I was there's a bit, bit of a hobby of mine at the moment, and uh, I've sort of I don't know about you two, but being in sort of podcasts and stuff like that, I found that we're in an age now where there's so much knowledge. You know, if you want to learn stuff, you can pull in what you need to know. You can pull it in yeah. from from netcasts, from podcasts, from YouTube. You can. I'm so not watching what's on the TV at the moment. You know, a, a final of X Factor in the jungle couldn't give a four X. The yeah. um, Radio Four used to be an avid listener to Radio Four for a while. It was I used to listen to the Archers um, because it fitted in with my day in that it was on at lunchtime. So I used to sort of have a break, have some lunch, listen to the Archers. And then then I think they committed the cardinal still of mo moving it from sort of one thirty to about 10 past 2. And so I got out of the habit. And then about two or three years later, I decided to sort of try and get into it again. So I listened to a few episodes and I realised that nothing had happened absolutely nothing <laughs> i i was like within one episode or two i was back into it again and i thought that but i mean that's the way it's written isn't it it's, it's written so that people can drop into it easily without having to know all about the fire but um I, you know that, that made me think why why was i listening to every episode when i could miss a couple of years out and just get straight back into it where i'd pretty much where i'd left off you know so radio four now and and uh, I don't know if you've listened to what they've got on most of the time. You I mean you know you, you you turn Radio Four on and you're just you're quite likely to just drop into the middle of a program on the Dewey Decimal System uh, and how uh, library books are classified. And I'm thinking, well, I don't really want to know about that at the moment. They've got a problem, haven't they? The sort of conventional media yeah. in that they are they've got a fixed audience and they have to try and second guess what everyone's going to want to hear. Yeah. And I think that they do they are quite good at that, but increasingly I think that people are going to drift away and say no i'm not I'm not interested in salmon farming uh learning about salmon farming. I want to learn about um you know bitcoin or whatever you know whatever my interests are but with the, i mean i'm a I'm a yeah. I'm a Radio Two fan myself. After uh, well, I I was an avid uh, Radio One listener for many years until Chris Miles. Uh, well, it became the Chris Miles show rather than B BBC Radio One show at the end. Uh, so I had to uh, to turn over to Radio Two, and and it's the, every day they have very topical subjects, whatever it may be, and the, they did actually discuss bitcoins as well. Um, so they usually. Uh, they they plug two or three different uh, different items and um, they get the the listeners calling in and giving their comments. So it's yeah, it, it's good. I mean, I'm I'm not old enough to get to Radio Four yet, Derek. But you know, give me another fifteen years when I'm your age, and I'll, I'll be there. It's not. It's nothing to do with chronological age. It's mental age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we all drift from Radio One to Radio Two to Radio Four, don't we? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't listen to the radio. I, I can't abide the radio. It just winds me up. People telling you what to listen to. Well, they don't just tell you. They just put it on. They say, right now you're listening to this. Then we're going to chat for five minutes. And it's always inane chatter. It's just completely pointless. I just cannot deal with the radio. I know Radio Four is, um, you know, it, it's more a, a show thing, isn't it? They actually have shows, they have comedy shows, they have news shows and things. So, the, I mean, there's hardly any music on Radio Four, is there? If any, I guess. Oh no, but, they hate music on Radio Four. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't like being. I don't like having music thrust at me. I choose what I want to listen to, and it's exactly what you're saying about YouTube or the TV. Mm. I rarely watch tv because i've got netflix and yes there's youtube and i just i consume what i choose to consume you put the tv on you're at the mercy of of their programming yeah i'm just not interested anymore now that netflix is pretty much the best thing ever because you know in tv terms because there's so much content and there's always something interesting on there movies tv music documentary whatever if, I think if you've got the bandwidth, 
and I think most people have now got the bandwidth, haven't yeah. they? Then you can just yeah. now you should just choose what you listen to. Yeah, yeah no. and you, you can you can watch it on your phone, your tablet, you know, just about anything. And they're bringing out these watches now where you can, you know, they actually properly work now rather than the ones released 20 years ago which didn't but you can watch tv on a watch that sort of thing is crazy now talking of uh, new technology and and things like that are you um uh, have you got anything that you're waiting to find in your stocking <laughs> have you got because <laughs> this is about that this is the time of year when i my thoughts turn to treating myself to a new computer and I think Dell knows this. <laughs> they've, they've got some pretty tempting PCs on their website. And they're very, I mean, it's the 16th now, and they can deliver by the 19th. So they're not dumb. They know who you want. They know you want this over Christmas, this thing. So have mm. you, are there any bits of technology or anything else that uh, you, the two of you are thinking of treating yourself to? Quite a nice new no. abacus is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, I think in this day and age, Derek, if people want to buy something, they'll just go out and buy it. I know, that's uh, bad, isn't it? It is, especially, I mean, we've got three kids, uh, the eldest eight, five, and then a 17-month. Uh, and it's not like when we were kids and you, you used to have to put on your Christmas list sort of four months prior to Christmas. And yeah, if you yeah. were lucky, you might get one of them. Yeah. Now the kid says, oh, I want this, that, and the other. And actually, they're not overly expensive, a lot of these toys. Obviously, they're, they're cheaply made plastic, and they break within uh, a couple of weeks of the kid having them. But, you know, it's um, that's just how it is now. It's the size has changed, I think. Well, my kids are a yeah. lot older. They're, they're in ones in their 30s and ones in the late 20s. And they say to me, you know, Dad, have you got anything you'd like for Christmas? And I look at them and I say, look, I can honestly say to you, there's not a single thing on earth I need <laughs> that apart I haven't already deck. got, you know, apart from some more what about space. The, uh, what about <laughs> the Stanner stair lift and the walk-in bath? <laughs> well, <laughs> but if I wanted one, I would have bought one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know. hey, listen to this. I, I I just got my iPad Air, okay? I've been using an iPad 2 for two years, and I've upgraded to the iPad Air. And a chap came around this morning to buy my iPad 2, and he explained to me he's buying it for his seven-year-old daughter to replace her first-generation iPad. Yeah. And I thought, what? She's seven? Yeah, you know, yeah. I've got a six-year-old girl, and she is not having an ipad until she's a teenager you know well, she'd be using dad's ipad air won't she <laughs> well yeah i mean that's the yeah. thing the kid the well, kids put it another work. way you won't be able to find your ipad air until she's a teenager <laughs> yeah. no there's, there's all sorts of stuff on there that i let the kids do yeah but i i wouldn't ever consider letting them have their own one at, at that kind of age and he said that he and his wife both have ipads the daughter's got an iPad, you know, it's just like a whole house full of iPads. And that's the thing, all, all this technology is is just too available, I think, um, to to anybody. You know, even even people on benefits are using iPads and Steady. have state-of-the-art computers Steady. and massive TVs. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. And uh, going back to what you said, don't buy anything from Dell. If you're going to buy a computer, do it properly and get it custom-built because it'll serve your needs a lot better than something from well, dell my, no, my son-in-law's more than I mean, he built the last couple of computers that i bought and they've been they're very they're very good but dell i don't know to, i mean you know i don't want to put him to all the trouble of having to order all the bits and put it all together again because it's not a, it's a non-trivial task building a computer so i don't know yeah. whether just spending a grand and getting one off the shelf from dell because um, the the the, um, the problem I've got is that we're putting a lot of this stuff on you on YouTube, and if you make a video, let's say it's a half hour, let's say it's a one hour video, right? A one hour video, this is perhaps just straightforward, recorded off your screen or something, will take probably an hour to edit. Less if it's just a straightforward start to finish thing that you can just dump. It's it's going to take at least two hours to render it anyway to put it in a format that's suitable to upload to YouTube, and then at the speed I've got and this my, my connection's no slouch, but it's fourteen megabits down, and I don't know perhaps a couple of megabits up. But to to upload a one hour YouTube video takes probably five hours. 
So you have to do that yeah. overnight. Now, I know that's the speed of the internet connection and the actual speed of the computer is not going to uh, affect that much. But now, you know, we're getting to the point where you need insane amounts of insane amounts of computing power. You need, you know, mm, thousands yeah. of CUDA cores in your graphics processor now or some sort of industrial workstation to... Uh, process video because it's such high resolution now so it's 1080p video everyone expects you can't put a video on youtube now in 480p and expect anyone to watch it they just won't you know they just don't want that quality anymore they want they want hd videos so anyway so and that's and rightly so um, well yeah exactly that's what i want as well so I can't, who can blame them yeah. But I won't listen to Radio 2, Richard, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't listen to music. For a start, when I'm working, I don't know, Chris, what you're like when you're writing, but can you have music on in the background? Are you happy yeah, to work while you, you know, listen to the radio at the same time? I just can't do that. Well, no, no, not the radio, because the radio is distracting. But if I'm... I, I have different rules for the different work I do. If I'm proofreading, then I will have uh, something gentle you know more classical no no lyrics because the lyrics they they interfere with what you're reading pretty much uh you know vocals i mean and if you you know if, if i'm writing something then again i'll generally have something uh nice and chilled no words in it but if i'm uh doing page layouts or something like that or or just general admin whatever then yeah i'll, I'll have some I have whatever on, really, you know, something loud and good. But generally, I have music on all the time. But I can't do that on the radio. I just don't like, you know, what, sometimes you can listen to the radio for an hour and just hear one song that you actually enjoy. And I don't think that's a particularly pleasant experience. And my wife is always has the radio on. It drives me up the wall. Some people, though, um, music is their language, isn't it? I think we all go through a phase in our teenage years where music sort of speaks to us in the same way as uh, when when people are speaking to you. You know, you get a mess, you get something from it, don't you? Emotionally, um, yeah. and then I suppose you you tend to grow out of that. But I now I'm with music. I'm terrible. I'm if I've heard a song before, I won't listen to it again. And <laughs> Bridie will have the she'll have the radio on, and I'll turn it off. And she said, "What did you turn it off for?" I said, "I've heard all this lot." Yeah, I, I <laughs> do the same of pale. thing. Heard that in 1973, you know. <laughs> Come on, feel the noise. No, heard that one. Yeah, I'm, not, oh. I'm not quite that bad. Why do you if, listen if to if it some... again? What's the point of keep listening to the same song? And, uh, you know, I know oh. it invokes emotion over and over again, but there comes a point where you just think, actually, what, you know, what's the point? It's no, like watching the same music. FA Cup final over and over again, isn't it? The result's the same. Some people well, like that. Some okay. music that... Yeah. Uh, no, I completely disagree there. I, I listen to, sometimes I'll listen to a band over and over exclusively for two, three months on end, you know. I just love it, the the energy, the feeling you get from it. Yeah, of course you want to recreate that. A cup final is different because it is the same every time, whereas songs are multi-layered. You, if you can put a song on and you can... It can be on in the background and it doesn't do anything for you. But if you put the headphones on and you actually listen or just if you just single out the bass line, I can listen to a whole song and just hear the, the beat, you know. You can just single that out. You can tune all the rest out. That is what music is about for me, is, is appreciating the whole thing, all the different layers. But most music is very boring. I listen to um, interesting music no no i, I know i know i've listened to you i mean you've been kind enough to send me links to some of the stuff you've done and some of the stuff you like and it's i like it you know it's it's uh, i don't know weird is such a harsh word it's sort of uh interesting different different there we are um but um when you when we write we have to make sure that the first paragraph of anything grabs someone's attention don't we we know i mean i know when i'm writing the leader for dental practice for example if i haven't got someone within the first paragraph then that's it they're gone they'll they'll just turn over the page and yet i've just signed up to spotify which is they tell me a music service on and it's free on mobile devices at the moment so i'm giving it a go on my old nexus 7 um and um 
and I'm sort of flicking through these songs thinking, oh, no, I like this one. Mm, give it 10 seconds. No, that sounds boring. Mm, no, give this one 10 seconds. That sounds boring. And if they haven't got you within 10 seconds, then that's it. And songs don't seem to want to do that, you know? I mean, That's when, ridiculous. You can't do that. <laughs> that's like... <laughs> That's like if you watched the first Faulty Towers and said, oh, that wasn't so good. And then if you'd never gone through the rest of it, you know, you've got <laughs> to give things towers. a chance. Yeah, but you can't afford that. Th- there are 10,000 songs on. There are more than 10. There's probably 100,000 songs on Spotify. You can't give them a chance. That's why I'm about saying. The, what about the music from your era? Okay, you've got um, White A Shade Of Power. You've got Genesis you know, yes, yeah. bands like that. That's a little bit and before my time, but yeah, go on. Yeah, but you, you listen to the <laughs> I'm first... I'm more Alice you, Cooper, Rod Stewart, but go on, yeah. You listen to the first 30 seconds of a Genesis song, and it's nothing like the rest of the song. You know, that's the, yeah, the whole prog enough. idea. Yeah, but in those days, I, I had more time. I'm, I'm in my 50s now. It, things are speeding up. I've got to get stuff done, you know. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I'm not skiving off school now with a can of lager sitting in the deck chair listening to Led Zeppelin on somebody else's uh, long player. I don't have time to listen to stuff. <laughs> I've got to get it done. I've got to get it done. And uh, it's... I, 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 I mean, don't get me wrong. I love music. I love music. I love Led Zeppelin. I love um, the modern Muse. I love like Muse. They're reasonably modern. I like, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know, I like, I like all that. And I know when you like a band, you will listen to the rest of their stuff. You know, listen to the rest of whatever they've done because it's, you know, you if you like that, you'll like this, as they say on Amazon. But uh, mm. <laughs> I can't. I know. I'm just finding it. The, Perhaps the problem with Spotify is that they don't work like Amazon. They don't say, uh, they don't, what they should do is they should say, like, press this button and hear, like, an excerpt of a song, and it'll be, like, the best bit of it, you know, the bit that everybody finds a bit catchy and sings along to. And they'll say, do you like this? And you just say yes or no. And if you say no, they'll say, okay, fine, and then they'll play you something else. Or if you say yes, they'll say, right, well, this is... Because they do have other, there are other bands. Once you're listening to a song, they they will. This is not really a music podcast, but <laughs> <laughs> while we're fixing the world, we might as well fix Spotify. Uh, they, they, this, they, there are insufficient links between the music, you know. Uh, so they, and you know, you know, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but on YouTube, you start watching a video on YouTube, and you click, and it says, "Would you, you know." other people are watching this and they're all also buy it so you click on it and you click on it and you click on it and after five clicks you're always watching a plane crash have you noticed that <laughs> yes you're always watching planes blowing up and falling out of the sky it doesn't matter where you start you can start with a picture of a baby you can stick with start with a picture of someone going on a tour of the zoo five connected videos later you're always watching somebody blow up in a plane mm. and it's the same with spotify you, you, it doesn't matter what you click, you always end up with boy bands, I've found. And I'm like, I don't, well, I'm up a cul de sac here that I don't really want to be up this cul de sac. I don't want to know bands like Blue. I want to back out and go back to where I came from. Heavy rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think this revelation speaks volumes about, about you, actually. Do you think it's your subconscious? Com- yeah, your computer, it learns from what, you, what, from what you want, precisely what you're saying spotify learns what you're interested in Uh, so you are clearly into boy bands (laughs) and very very comfortable being up that cul-de-sac i've never got on with the touch screen that's a trouble every time i pick up my computer i select something that i didn't mean to merely because my thumb's gone onto the edge of the screen and it selected it (laughs) that's my excuse officer (laughs) 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 and i'm sticking to it (laughs) that's quite shocking yeah so anyway i'm going to be taking it oh you do take off between christmas and new year do you take it off yeah, yeah you ask. well both of us i guess well, either of mm. you um yeah chris and i were hoping to go away somewhere together <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. we could just we could just sit in your car in that car park you take me to sometimes <laughs> <laughs> can it chase <laughs> is that the one I, f- I forget the name i'm n- never looking at the signs on the way in yeah but, um, see stan collimar uh, <laughs> oh, was that him look i don't want to have to censor this podcast i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i can only yeah. guess right. but the trouble with you the high what, court back, back... is that they're not going to guess are they they're going to they're going to 
So what what is this all about? It's all been in the press some time ago. So it's uh, yeah, we're not saying anything that most of the public uh, aren't aware of. Oh, and he's admitted uh, it, has he? I think he got got caught red-handed or, or whatever the <laughs> saying is. Red-faced. <laughs> yeah. right, okay. <laughs> red-handed uh, and red-faced. The, the yeah. thing about Christmas is you can you can take as much time off as you know if you're self-employed as I am. You can do whatever you like, but you're not going to make any money if you just sit around watching Disney films. But I think that the, there's not many actual public holidays over Christmas oh there Christmas Eve is not a holiday um, and it's only I think Christmas Day that is the uh, well maybe Boxing Day as well no, Boxing Day and, and New Year's yeah. Day yeah, yeah but that, that people tend to assume that, that Christmas is a some sort of bonanza of time off work well it and, should be and, yeah it should be <laughs> but in actual fact it isn't and I remember reading something not long ago that about, um, you know, reminding dentists that you don't have to give your staff lots of time off because really they, they, they should even be working on Christmas Eve. If your practice can open, you might as well open because there'll be patients. Yeah. yeah, well, if you yeah, but my brother always said this: you can open up on a Sunday afternoon. You can come in to work at Sunday night, at ten o'clock, and people there'll be patients. There'll always be patients. Yeah. You have to have some time off. Yeah. And the way we used to do it, and I do recommend this to anyone, we used to give the staff four weeks holiday a year. It was pretty generous. And uh, we used to ask them to take two weeks off in the summer. And we had like a staggered system. So we were open from eight, eight till eight, right? So someone came in from eight till two, and then the other person came in from two till eight, or well, something like that. And um, they overlapped at lunchtime. I don't think we were open. No, no, we must have not. We couldn't have been eight till eight. It was eight till five. And then they overlapped at lunchtime. And the reason why they overlapped at lunchtime was because then one could hand off to the other one and say, this has happened and, and briefer, you know. So they had like an hour when they were both working together. But that also meant that if one of them was sick, she would ring the other one. So the one, if the one who was sick rang me, I got very cross and said, look, I'm, it's not up to me to cover the reception. You... Between the two of you, you you're supposed to cover the reception, and that cut down an awful lot on the um, sort of illness that wasn't really illness because the one knew if the other one wasn't really sick, they sort of knew. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. they didn't ring each other up and say I'm sick when they weren't really sick because they had to get it past the other one, not me. Whereas I might well have said, "Oh yeah, I hope you get better soon." So there was very very little sickness running two part-time receptionists also it worked really well because one of them had a young child and she wanted to be away by about one o'clock because she she could drop it off at school and then be around at the school gate to pick it up and it, it suited them both brilliantly you know uh, to working part-time now as far as the holidays went uh half the surgery because we had two dentist so we had two dentists two nurses and two receptionists which is why it really worked so well but any more than that would still work well and two of us had the first two weeks of august and the other the other half had the second two weeks of august so again we were down to one surgery out of two over august but we were open all, over all of august so that was two of the four weeks the other uh week was either the week before easter half of us took the week before easter so we had like monday through to the next tuesday and the other half took the week after easter so we had like the friday through to the monday week uh, so that was quite a good holiday and last but not least we all took the week between uh christmas and new year's the fourth week so um this year we've got the 24th is christmas eve so mm, didn't we we i don't know how we would have done it because um the first working day really of 2014 is thursday the second so we probably would have worked up to lunchtime on tuesday the 24th this year had and and we don't book any patients on the tuesday morning the 24th you just leave it entirely open for emergencies everyone comes in when it's quite clear that we've seen all the emergencies we will then crack open the baileys give each other our christmas presents go home 24th lunchtime and then don't come back really until thursday the second so there so there you've got the 25th bank holiday 26th bank holiday wednesday the first bank holiday and 
In fact, you see, that's not even enough holiday because they probably would have been due like another day or two um, holiday on top of that because that's not even a, actually a proper week. Mm. But that system worked really, really well, really well. We did that for years, and it gave everyone off the week between Christmas and New Year. Yeah. On the basis, of course, that if anyone did get a toothache or fall over and knock a tooth out, we, we did have to open the surgery. But um, we the patients seemed to know that between Christmas and New Year, it was a, it was an emergency service only, you know. Yeah. What about your What about money for dentists, Richard? We have compulsory shutdown, so we're actually closing on Friday, and we're not back until the New Year. So I think that'll be the Thursday, the second. But we 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 give it to the team and and ask them when they want to to stop working, um, and obviously when they want to come back, and they take it out their holidays. Obviously the uh, the uh, bank holidays is uh, is a given anyway um but my team get up to 25 days i think um something like that a year plus bank holidays which i think is quite good that's not yeah. bad so five weeks plus the bank holidays yeah, yeah which yeah. is another eight is it seven or eight yeah yeah well i think it's eight unless the queen gives an extra freebie here and there for these different events that seem to be happening pretty much every year nowadays don't get, don't get me on to that. <laughs> don't get go, me started on the to... Queen, that bloody QE2 bridge. <laughs> People who work in retail uh, have it very differently, don't they? I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you want to go and buy some slippers in the sale, then you want the shop to be open. That's the it thing. Helps. Whereas, Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you've got a little bit of uh, an issue with your, your teeth, then you'll probably bite down and wait until um till the turkey's all been eaten and you're back in the new year you don't really um, want to have any dentistry done do you between christmas and no. new year i mean i think all people want is an emergency service they will be quite happy to know that and anyway slippers wouldn't you i'd rather shoot myself in the right eye socket than buy slippers I, was that example chosen i mean that, tell me that. Tell me, I'm, Richard, you're not at that stage in your life where you're buying slippers, please. I don't, I don't buy them, but I always wear them. Not obviously, not when I'm going down the shops. That'd just be inappropriate, <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially <laughs> when I'm at home. It's six miles to the nearest yeah. shop, so if I'm, uh, you know, getting in the car and then driving up to Brecon, it's uh, yeah, mind you, you probably fit quite nicely in Brecon. <laughs> six miles to the nearest shop. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a long way, so uh, you need to prepare. You need to think, actually... What you, have you been there while it's been snowing yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we would. Um, my father-in-law, who was into his gadgets, he bought the boys a couple of really flash sledges. So we've, we're right in the middle of the Brecon Beacons and the Black Mountains. It's beautiful. So um, at the time, we had a 4 by 4 so we drove up the mountain, well, halfway up the mountain, and then we got stuck. So uh, we had to walk the, the rest of the way, but the kids loved it. Absolutely loved it. So are you not worried that if we do have like a quite a bad winter, you're going to get completely isolated and cut off and have to eat the kids? You know, the starving kids in Africa, what's the worst that can happen? You know, we've uh, they end up having to eat soup for a, a few days. You know, it's not the end of the world, is it? Well, no. Well, it I is mean, if you have to eat each other. Yeah, I was going to well, say. Well, we do have a few cans of soup, so, you know, as backup, just in case. There's plenty of sheep in the fields as well, so we can go and slaughter a couple of them. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. It'd be yeah, quite hard that, to yeah. find them. You wouldn't <laughs> find them in the snow, though, would you? Go and help yourself to a sheep. Why not? Keep your eye on black sheep. <laughs> Nobody cares about them anyway. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> no, we'd be all right. And, I mean, like last year, we had uh, the village was cut off for, for three or four days, but, you know, in the scheme of things, it's nothing, is it? You know, you know the snow's coming, um, and you just deal with it. Yeah. So, what's, uh, come on then, let's have a quick round-up then, because this is our last podcast of 2013. What's uh, in store, do you reckon, for next year? Give us a prediction that we can laugh about in a year's time. <laughs> in dentistry or just general? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, you know, in general, or dentistry. Well, well, I'll become a best-selling author. My second book will come out, and I will sell the film rights and never have to talk to either of you again. Um, well, my, <laughs> upside all round, then. 
<laughs> yeah, big silver lining there. Win, win, win. <laughs> my, um, my prediction for dentistry is that the CQC and the GDC will have an it's a knockout style fight to the death um, to see who's best at cocking up dental regulation. All right. Um, Barry Cockroft will uh, will take part. Probably he might even be the referee, and of course he'll just fumble and bumble around like he does on everything else. Um, and that's it, really. I think dentistry will probably leave the NHS finally. The NHS will be banned um, by China, who will take over the UK. And yeah, I think the X Factor. Um, and Strictly and all that rubbish will continue as normal. You heard it here first. Yeah, well, I'd second all that, Chris. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> it all sounds highly likely to me. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I, I think there's going to be some big big challenges uh, regarding the the pensions, actually, from a financial point of view, with annual allowance changes, which is falling down to £40,000, including NHS and private pension contributions from April next year. And then, uh, obviously, the lifetime allowance. The NHS is such a cracking pension scheme. Um, people are going to be breaking these rules, these maximums. So we're, we're in a position where... When auto enrolment comes in, which is a compulsory pension scheme for certain uh, businesses, if they've got a certain number of employees, um, I've touched on it previously. Where some associates and hygiene is it a minimum minimum number? Yeah, it is. But when you take into account cleaners and part time staff, you know you've got a handful of people. It doesn't take doesn't what, take long. What's the minimum? Do you know? Five. Five. Oh, uh, thank God for that. Yeah. That's all right then. We'll we'll we will we will be exempt. <laughs> fusion but, fusion the chances of fusion having more than five employees are pretty pretty low. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it doesn't have to actually be employees as such. It could fall under the self employed rules as well if oh, somebody okay. actually um actually attends a certain place of work between set hours etc so you may pay them on a self-employed basis but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will fall outside of the um the auto yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. which is interesting and if the practice isn't following the rules then there may be a chance that they will be breaking the cqc uh, guidelines so yeah interesting times ahead i think so i think there'll be a few practices that uh that will get their fingers burnt in 2014, 2015. Um, but I, I hope none of our clients and none of our listeners. Right. Mm. Well, my predictions are, uh, let me have just run down the list here. British Dental Association is going to organise an expedition to Mars. Uh, <laughs> that's the first one. Uh, the dollar is going to collapse as a unit of world currency and be replaced by the Bitcoin which will and they will rise to be worth a million pounds each <laughs> wow so the three that i own will mean that i don't have to talk to either of you two guys <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. it's going to be a quiet yeah. year 2014 it's going to be a great year <laughs> so, it is now what what i said i noticed you call it 2014 as do i i actually get quite annoyed when people call it 2014 Really? It just doesn't sound right. It's, it sounds it sounds too um, sort of buzzword, you know. It, it's Don't you um, call nineteen fourteen the 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 Great War was from nineteen fourteen to nineteen eighteen, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't. You don't call it one thousand nine hundred and fourteen, do you? No, no, but it doesn't work when you do it with the two thousand twenty fourteen. It, it does. It just it does. Sounds... You just got to do it enough, and it sounds fine. I don't like it. I, I don't really like don't it. like it. And also, as I'm always right then you know that kind of so what do you want to call make, it make of, make of that what you will it's 2014 oh, it is it's, it was long. it was the year 2000 wasn't it it wasn't the year 2000 it was or the year 2000 <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> the year 2000 and it was called 2001 2002 2003 yeah and it so would that, have been it would have been confusing if it was 21 no it was yeah. 2001 in the same way as it was 1901 <laughs> An 1801. So what will you call it? 
what will you call it when it's 2000 when it's 2111 what will you say 2111 tw- 2111 no you won't because that'll sound ridiculous you're going to call it You'll 2111 say, <laughs> absolutely oh get away you're pulling my get leg away. now you're pulling my leg get i'm pulling your trunk actually you're pulling my long <laughs> we'll be, trunk we'll be long gone yeah. by then anyway I want to see how long your trunk can get. I won't. Do you know what? Just before we go, I've got to tell you, I've treated myself to something for Christmas. I bought Not a tra- cryogenics. I bought a... Tra- no. <laughs> 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 no. No. I'm going to... I've bought... I've used some of my Bitcoin to put out a hit on you. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to have you cremated and turned into a diamond and shot into a rocket on the BDA Mars expedition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bought. Lovely thought. Do you want to know what I bought or not? Yes. yes. Right. I bought myself a treadmill, a walking machine. Okay. You're gobsmacked, aren't you? You see? Yeah. So now I am actually, I get up and I get on it and uh, do a bit of, um, you know, not exactly jogging, but stumbling. I stumble along for a bit and then it makes me feel better sitting in front of the computer all day because I think to myself, well, at least I'm getting a bit of exercise. So now when I'm sitting here playing World of Tanks when I should be working, at least I'm not sitting here thinking this is unhealthy for me. Good so you're there. actually walking whilst you're playing on your well, World of Tanks or whatever it may be, or do you not, just go and have a break? No, no, no. Uh, well, what you can do, when if you've got a little tablet like a Nexus 7 or something, you can just prop it up on the old machine and you can be walking along. Um, you know, in the old days, you used to walk along and read a paperback or something, didn't you? Because you could have a quick look over the top of it, see if you're going to bump into a tree. Well, on this, obviously, you don't have to worry about bumping into trees. So you can just watch your watch what's on the, you know, Twit TV or whatever. Whatever's on the old uh, iPad. Well, no, I don't know. I've got a Nexus 7. Um, mm. And it's great. It's great. It's a nice way to exercise, I find. Don't never get anywhere. But where I am in the country, it's horrible. You don't want to walk anywhere in the country. People think, oh, the country, oh, marvellous, lovely and everything. I walk far more in London than I do in the country. And the reason is the country is wet, it's cold, it's full of wild animals. It's <laughs> <laughs> You're a miserable bugger, you are. No, yeah, I'll tell you what, mate, <laughs> when I, last time I went to see my GP and he said to me, you know, you need to lose some weight, as they always do, cause lack of imagination, and he said to me, why don't you walk around your field, you know, you've, you've got fields around you. And I thought, immediately I thought there's a bloke who's never walked in a field. Because yeah. he's walked on a on a municipal uh, football pitch, and the thought that that is a field. Now, an actual field is rutted, it's muddy, it's uh, uneven. You're you're very very likely to sprain an ankle just walking on a field, even the grass, because the grass grows. It sort of after a while, it grows into tufts if it's not cut. So it's like a marsh, you know. <laughs> so, and then and if you want to walk on the road, my God, you wouldn't walk on the roads around here. For a start, there's no pavements. We yeah. pay more rates than everyone else, and we've got no pavements, we've got no drainage, we've got no bloody mains gas. Oh. So you, you have don't to... have mains gas? We don't have mains gas. You living on the moon still? I live, <laughs> and I'm not kidding, the gas Methane. people... The gas people, the main gas pipe to the local town runs under a bit of land next to my house. The mains gas. And I'm not on the gas. And yet I have to let them get access to my land every time they want to do something with the gas. And I've said to them, could you just lo- run a tiny little pipe off the side into my house? No. Major, major works. So um, we um, uh, do everything with electricity. And oh, every wow. and no mains drainage. Have you got mains drainage, Richard? Um, we've got a septic tank. So yeah, no. exactly. Well, it's independent. So you have it, it pumped out, do you? Yeah, yeah, once every few years. But you can just put a dead animal in there and it, the flies sort of do the job. And you shouldn't really have to empty septic tanks. But as long as you're not putting wet wipes down the toilet, then you are right. Septic, you, yeah, septic tanks, I think you do have to empty. But it's uh, cesspits you don't have to empty. And well... <laughs> 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 I 
No, it's a big, you know. But anyway, we'll have to carry over septic tanks the next time we talk. But, <laughs> but walking down the road here, you need to have you need to have a crash helmet. You need to have a a, a yellow fluorescent jacket. You need to have a, a flashing torch and a first aid kit because you will get run over. <laughs> You will get run over. People have been killed not 100 yards from my house, cycling, cycling along, have been hit by cars because there's no bloody pavements. And on the roads, on either side, they grow these uh, grey alder trees like um, windbreaks. So it's not as if a lorry comes along, you can even dive anywhere. There's nowhere to dive. You'd have to climb a tree to get out of its way. It's just, I can't climb trees. So there we are. So that's it. So... Uh, for those of you who are watching on the uh, the video, uh, I'll just wave to everyone on the video. Um, you might start to see a change. Might you might start to see a change in a year or two. <laughs> or you may be able to get a discounted uh, oh, treadmill, just, discounted in January. treadmill in January. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Along with all the other crap that we'll people don't want after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll advertise it in the February edition of the Fusion magazine. One second-hand treadmill, hardly used. <laughs> one very careful owner <laughs> right well all the best and uh, I'd like to wish anyone who's listening nobody listens to this podcast but I will do it anyway uh, I'd like to wish everybody who's listening to the podcast a very happy Christmas and a prosperous new year here here More yeah, prosperous Christmas, with the involvement everyone. of Richard I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> the expert in prosperity <laughs> do our and, thing uh, do our Chris best. good luck with your second book well, well, thank uh, you very I, much. I mean that. I think for anyone to write a second book after that one you wrote is courageous and you deserve all the support you can get. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. In the spirit so, it was intended. Yeah, you know. You know I love you. <laughs> oh. oh, you're so sweet. Yes. Merry Christmas, one and all. All right, guys. Goodbye. Merry I'll Christmas. talk to you next year. Yeah, take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.